Today I'm going to talk about the delusion that the Twin Flame Runner and the Twin Flame Chaser has. And I'm creating this video because the delusion is very, very different. And in reality, this very, very different delusion creates most of the conflicts because you cannot understand your partner. And the aim of this video to give you some insights so you can make your relationship work. Before I start this video, I just want to point out that of course there are many other delusions as well. I just want to point out this very, very core one. And the other thing you have to be aware of is that the Twin Flame Runner and the Chaser are both on a spectrum, which means that they can be very, very unhealthy and they can go towards a healthier version of themselves. And I want to point this out because most of the Twin Flame videos are going to talk about that you are perfect and your core goal is to find this other perfect partner and your relationship is going to be perfect. And the other thing you are going to hear most of the time is that the Twin Flame Chaser is going to be the awake one or the awakened and the runner is going to be the unawakened and on a weekend one and your goal is to wait or or make this other person be aware and this is the whole mission and that's when the reunion is going to happen but in reality this is not true both of you are unaware both of you are unawakened but the unawakened part is going to be different so a twin flame chaser is going to have the twin flame runner part on a weekend within, which means that the twin flame chaser is going to be very, very aware of the emotions, the internal impulses, but less uh, aware of how the runner sees reality. And the runner is going to see it more from the head. It's going to be a more uh, construct type of person, how the rules work what to expect and the opposite of that of course the twin flame runner is going to be on the weekend of course in the emotional part more so the chaser part is repressed uh, but more aware of the how things work in in the big picture or in society and that's why you two attract each other so in reality you are a perfect match because what is repressed in one of you is dominant in your other part. But the reason you meet is to wake each other up. Not one uh, wakes the other up. It's you both trigger each other and you give each other a second um, option that you are able to connect to these repressed parts because these repressed parts were created when you were children because a twin flame connection is going to be an attachment and when we talk about attachment it's going to be uh your second level out of three levels you have the reptile mammalian and primate so it's going to be uh developed from around age three and these are very very early connections within your nervous system and your brain and this is what your twin flame is able to trigger. So now you are able to see the exact same trauma, but as an adult, because now you have this third part, you have the head part, you can reflect on that, you can see it clearer compared to when you were a child. And this is what you share, you share this wound, and you share the same insecurity, you share the same weaknesses, but you too created a completely different strategy to deal with this trauma, hence the oppositeness. The chaser who tries to resolve all things in the body and the runner who tries to resolve all things in the head. And you need to create a healthy balance between the uh, body and the mind. And when you make it integrated so you have a healthy chaser and a healthy runner in both of you 
That's what the reunion is. That's when you can stay together, but that reunion has to happen within as well. And I always say this, that sometimes one of you is going to be able to integrate, but the other one is not. And your goal is to give self-love. And maybe the self-love is going to be that you leave the other person behind. And that's when some people feel, like, okay, but that's not love. Love means that you have the other person to become self-aware. And when you leave your unhealthy twin flame behind, what happens is you stop reinforcing uh, their behavior. So you make them think, you make them feel, you trigger them. You take away that love that you are giving them. And that's what can help them to become more self-aware. And this is where the delusion part is coming from. That the chaser is so connected to this emotional part that if I love you this much, you must love me this much. Because if I feel this way, it's logical that you would feel that way uh, as well. That the feelings are the same. And if you don't love exactly as much um, as I love you, then I don't understand what is happening. I'm not worthy or, or what's going on. So the chaser tries to force the situation. This is their force. Uh, this is their control to make it feel that they love each other exactly the same way and exactly at the same intensity. And the delusion part comes from, from two things. One thing is that they expect the runner, so the chaser expects the runner, that you should know how I feel. But the feelings are not verbalized or the feelings are not verbalized in a healthy way. And the other key problem is that the chaser doesn't understand the runner's internal uh, mechanism. So you don't understand. None of you understand the other. That's why you argue that your internal uh, emotions are so different. So if you would understand how the runner feels, what are their internal experiences, you would be less reactive. You would understand that your behavior can trigger the runner. You re-trigger that uh, uh, fight and flight mode when they run away because they just cannot deal with that situation. Because a runner runs away from the feelings when they are under stress. They go in the head more. This is where the difference is. That under stress, you go more into the emotions, the chaser, that you really want to reach out, you go towards. And the runner is going to be the opposite. The runner goes away. And a last part to the chaser that you really have to understand, and this is your self-development, that you have to really understand how they feel. And I see it in many times that people believe that if you don't love me exactly the same way, I love you or I expect you to love me or with the exact same intensity, then your love is not real. So basically you devalue their love language and their intensity of love. But you also have to understand that, and this is where your trauma is coming from, that maybe your partner doesn't have the capacity, doesn't have the ability to love you exactly as much as you would need it, as you would want it. But it doesn't mean that they don't love you. So what that means is that you see the whole thing from your perspective, but you are able to switch into this other person's internal experiences and you feel the love you receive from their perspective. That maybe what they do for you, how much effort they put into that. And then this is where the empathy part is, that you understand yourself and understand the other person as well. But then you have to put the head part into it. And these are the rules 
rules of a healthy and working relationship that you can look up how a healthy relationship look like because maybe you understand your partner and understand yourself as well but then you have to really see the unhealthy behavior in you know, both of you and if you cannot start correcting that if you cannot start working towards that you both become healthy then the relationship has a very very high chance that it's not going to last and that's where the core delusion is if i keep going towards if i keep helping if i keep triggering if i keep loving then something is going to happen so you believe that you can make relationships happen you can make feelings happen but you don't have that power and that effort that you put into the other person has to be put into you. So instead of trying to fix the partner, that if the partner would be in the way you would expect to be, because that's when the relationship would work, you have to recognize that you have tried enough and now you have to put the effort into you. And you can control the partner. Unfortunately, we can't control other people. I wish they were like little puppets, but no. And the delusion of the runner is going to be related to the head that they have a set of rules uh, in their head, how most people behave, how situations work. And when they see the chaser to act in a certain way, they, they see it as, you act like a child. Why don't you know how most people uh, behave? You don't know the rules, how to behave in a relationship. So the problem here is, or the, the um, delusion here is, that they kind of come up with this as most people would know. So you should know. And that's where their control is coming from, that they don't communicate because they already decided if they know, then you should know as well. And they have this expectation that they shouldn't explain themselves. You should know it already. So it's more about the head, more about the knowing. They don't see the individuality, your individuality, because they are disconnected from their individuality. And that's where the opposite with the chaser that you should know how I feel. And this is the runner. You should know how most people would behave, how most people would think about this situation. That's when you can get a response that, okay, I just go away and you should think about it. And you will get to the same conclusion what most people get. But that's not true. And that's where the problem is that if they are disconnected from their own internal feelings, and they can't see how different they are from others. They think that everyone is the same. Everyone thinks the same. Or everyone should behave in the same way. Everyone should follow the same rules. Or this is the most probable. Uh, because most people do this. And they, they can't even see themselves that deep down how different they are. And that's the reason they can't see you either. So what I'm trying to say with this video, that you both hurt each other, but in a different way. And it's not that you want to hurt the other person consciously. These are mechanisms. You both came up in a really early age of your childhood and you keep repeating them because it has been working. It helped you. You are still alive. This is what your nervous system makes as a conclusion that if you are still alive, it, it means that it's working. But there is a deeper part in you that you, you feel pain. You feel unfulfilled. You feel that something is wrong. Something is missing. And this is a deeper part that tries to communicate with you that these parts are not balanced. They, they don't communicate in a proper way. That's your internal reality and it's expressed in this external reality when these two people meet and they are unable to communicate the problems. And I really want to point out something that it's not about that you don't have problems. It's not about that you don't 
fall down. You might be on a healthier scale, but sometimes you go down to a very, very unhealthy one. And your partner can do the same. It's not about not making mistakes. It's about that you are able to recognize it within you when you do that. You are able to go back and stabilize yourself. And also you are able to say sorry to your partner that, look, I had a really bad day or I'm going to a rough time. And you are able to communicate with the partner. So it means that your mind is open. You want to hear how they see reality, what their internal experiences are. And you open up your heart as well. You allow to make the other partner feel that you can connect on an emotional level to them as well, that they explain it well enough that even that type of an experience or internal experience is not well known for you because it's not within you. They explain it properly enough that they trigger that emotional part within them. Okay, now I kind of understand where you are coming from because the key problem in all relationships, and this is the delusion of our reality that is also in both of you. So this is something that's shared that you must be right because there can be only one correct answer. And this is why most relationships don't work because if you are in this game that I have to be right or the other person has to be right and you have to let the other person win, it means that you are in a battle. So one of them is going to be the winner and the other one is going to be the loser. But in reality, both of you lose. Because whoever wins in the short term is going to be a loser in the long term because you are going to hurt the other partner. The other partner feels devalued, feels misunderstood, feels rejected. So instead of trying to go for this who is right, who is wrong, you forget about this. Both of you can be right. I'm not saying about everything because there are very, very certain things that you cannot. Like, for example, things that can be measured that did you post this mail or not? And you can't be both right. So this is an exemption. But about internal experiences, it's not gaslighting or the other person rejects you when they have a completely different mindset. It's about you trying to open up the situation into, okay, I'm trying to understand you, where you are coming from. So instead of having one right answer, you have two right answers and you both have to accept the other uh, person's internal experiences and mental thoughts. And that's when the relationship can work. And as a last note, I just want to repeat the same thing again, that you have to also forget this, you should know already, type of a mindset, that you should know me. <laughs> you have to explain yourself. You, you have to get to know each other. And that's when this uh, thing that one of them is right or wrong and you keep explaining uh, your internal experiences can actually help you to, to get to know each other on a deeper level. And this expectation that you should have known, you, you should understand the rules. No, uh, try to see each other as that, you try to learn together. You try to learn each other's rules. Not the rules of society, each other's rules. Each other's patterns, how they see reality, how they react in a negative situation. Like this is something I've seen that I have been doing. Um, and it's really good when you go through a negative part and then you look back and you see. And this is something I've seen and I sat down with my partner and I said, look, the problem is that because he was a runner type, I'm a chaser, was a chaser type, that when I ask something from you, you don't respond. And then I keep asking the same thing. So that was a question, not to do something. It's a question. And you, I feel that you miss, um, you, you don't pay attention to me. You don't answer the question. 
And the only time you really answer the question is when I'm angry at you, when I'm arguing with you. And the problem is I've seen this pattern that in the beginning, I kept asking nice and several times. And I actually got to a point that the person only answered properly and honestly. For me, that was the honestly. When I was arguing and I told him, look, what happened that in the long term during the years, the reason I became so angry and argumentative straight away, I already flipped because I have learned unconsciously that I keep asking multiple times. You always just say something bullshit and you only answer it honestly when I argue. So it made me to go straight to fight. So we ended up fighting all the time when I really wanted something. And when I recognized this and when I explained to him that this is what I do when this is the situation, we could understand each other why things happened and he changed. He started to work on this thing that, okay, when you behave or when he behaves this way, this is what the consequences are going to be because a healthy relationship requires openness requires open communication and also he has to answer certain questions so I can understand him you can't be in a relationship where the person is uh they believe that they are just shy uh they don't really want to open up mm, I look I don't really like talking about myself and the problem is that when you meet a person like that who are you really with? Who do you really love? Because you don't see the personality behind the body. It's like uh, going on a date with a statue who doesn't talk to you, who doesn't have an internal personality. So a person has to really understand that in order to fully connect and in order to make also like the right decisions to stay in the relationship or not, the person has to be able to open up after a certain time and here is the trick if the person is unable to do that you have to be okay with that because they are just too frightened but it doesn't mean that you must stay in that relationship you also have to give yourself love and this is when you say look i understand your problem you have to I don't know, you don't say it to his face or her face that you have to work on yourself. You just say, look, I don't think this relationship is working and I want to be out of it. That's it. And this is that part when you can say that the partner is maybe triggered. You have to be aware of this delusion as well that we all have. And many times when the partner leaves, we suddenly become anxious and we we want to do everything for the partner to make the partner stay and this is something that makes people uh stuck in a relationship that it goes literally flat and then when they want to leave the other partner does everything to to make the relationship work and when you stay together it's again after a while they they just go back to where they were and it goes into these cycles you have to see the unhealthy part of this, that it's not stable. So uh, you have to also know that in the brain, there is a part that a partner becomes very, very attractive when they want to leave. But as soon as they are there, they are not interesting anymore. It's a little bit similar to how people are when they live in a place that they've seen the whole world, but they see nothing in their own country because... In the country, it's always there. It's not interesting. So these are just a few thoughts to help you in your relationship. And when I say in your relationship, it's not only with your partner, but the relationship with yourself as well. See you in my next video.